Well, hey everyone, how's it going? Sean here with another Genetry Solar video. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at uh, this inverter that I just built actually for myself. Um, before we get into that, 833 Genetry toll free Monday through Friday, uh, 9 to 5 Eastern Daylight Time. Do keep in mind that uh, I only answer my phone during those hours. And I get an incredible volume of calls every day. So, if you can't reach me, you can always text me or leave a message. Uh, GenitreeSolar.com, where you will find all power jack inverters. If there's something there that's not listed, just let me know. I can help you, be it parts, inverters, custom inverters, something like even this. So, head over to GenitreeSolar.com, get a hold of me if you need to. So this inverter, I just got done building, putting it together. I might have to do a few cable management things, but this is a custom inverter for me. I have the blessing and fortune of working with PowerJack and having parts available. And um, I decided to update my case. And I also decided that since I wasn't using charging, I didn't need any of that stuff in there at all. Because I use my uh, Mix Sky Blue charge controllers from Solar. To charge my battery bank. I do not use the grid to charge my batteries. So I put together this inverter for me and it seems to be running pretty good here on the bench and I'll go over some details here and what I actually did. This is a version 9, version 9 case. It's the black chassis which actually I like this look better than the power jet green. That's just a personal preference. Um, and uh, so it is a 15,000 watt inverter. This transformer here was uh, wound for me. Um, it is perfectly 100% balanced. It's right on the nose. No balancing issues at all with this. And uh, so it's a really good transformer. Never had any overheating problems with it as uh, much as I've run with it. So I extracted the transformer that I was using and dropped it in here. You can see I also cut one main board out. So why did I cut a main board out? Well, number one, these main boards handle a lot more power than the transformer will ever be able to handle. And we are th theorizing right now, between Sid and myself, that actually having two main boards, while it could theoretically increase your capacity, is actually detrimental to reliability. Now, complexity is always the enemy of reliability, but in this case, we believe that the MOSFETs are actually fighting each other between the two main boards. Now, that is strictly theory at this point. I don't have any 100% evidence or proof or anything to substantiate that theory, but uh, from the builds that I have done, I have found that that really truly is the the case. Um PowerJack added a second main board. The main reason that they did that was because of FETs being blown. But it's they're not being blown because of overload. They're mainly being blown up because of uh, charge function. And the inverter should shut down long before the FETs would you know get to their saturation point. But um, you know just PowerJack's response was to just continuously add more and more FETs. Uh, and unfortunately that was not a good solution because when one fat goes, you pretty much expect all of them are going to go. So I decided to take a main board out and already from the get go, I noticed that the, uh, well, first of all, the standby loss is lower as well that the, um, the fats actually run cooler on standby. That is no load or no load draw. They actually do run cooler. A transformer also runs cooler, but I'll explain why that's also a possibility with something else. But anyways, so one main board completely disconnected, and uh, yeah, it's, it's doing just fine. Now, there is a disadvantage to removing that second main board. Your surge is going to take a hit on that. Now, I did go through this main board here, and I added my... Uh, compound to the FETs, and I also added an extra cap on here, so there's six total caps uh, on this main board to try to help with that. But I honestly don't ever get to uh, what PowerJet claims to be 60,000 watts surge on one of these, so I'm not even really concerned about it. I'm sure that it'll do just fine with what I'm planning on running with it. 
but uh so yeah one main board and it, it really is doing just fine so uh in regards to the transformer i did add some more chokes to the transformer to help lower the uh the actual losses and that did uh lower them a little bit you got one choke on the transformer positive and two chokes on the transformer negative two winds each and uh, so that has improved the standby losses you can see that i moved my main board over here now that tray down there that's actually an amazon kindle tray and uh, that's just temporary i'm going to be getting some trays made but um, I just uh, set that tray uh, underneath there so that it wouldn't kind of come in contact with the case. So it is just kind of free standing there right now. Not exactly ideal. This is not something I would ship like this, obviously. Um, but it is just kind of sitting there. Uh, I have found that the components on the control board rarely get hot enough to even warrant ever needing to cool them at all, ever. But I do have this high-speed fan sitting here just in case it is needed. So all the control board is on this side. Now, obviously, I have a buck converter here. This is a 72 volt to whatever volt uh, buck converter. So right now I'm running 54 volts into the inverter, and it is bringing it down to 50 volts. As you can see there, yep, 50 volts. So it's bringing it down to 50 volts. That is to protect these fans. These fans are rated up to, I believe, 55 or 56 volts. My system regularly goes above 56 volts. When it's floating, it stays at around 55.8 volts, but when it's charging, it can go as high as 60 volts. Protecting these fans is critical because that will increase their life. So in order to do that, a buck converter is required. Now, on a side note... Sid is working with a supplier out of China to get us some wide voltage range fans that will handle much higher voltage. They will not be nearly as fast as these fans, but they will definitely be faster than stock power jack fans. And that will eliminate the need for a buck converter altogether. So that will reduce the complexity as well as cost. So we are working on that right now. That way the high speed fan kits that you see listed on GenitreeSolar.com uh, will reduce in price because we won't need a buck converter in order to get that to happen. So, um, for me personally, I'm going to stick with these fans because they're 242 CFM a piece, and they're extremely reliable fans. They're they're really really good fans. So, uh, you know, I have absolutely no problem sticking with these with a buck converter. But for simplicity, for ease of install, and so on, our goal is to get rid of that converter altogether. Now, I can still set you up with these Delta fans if you wish. Uh, that's completely up to you. And then a buck converter would be required. Otherwise, I would not warranty the fans. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so right now, buck converter, I've got this makeshift tray. If the uh, the battery, the, the high and the low side, were to come in contact with each other, it would mean instant death for the FETs. So that's why I have it sitting on a tray here so that it, that it cannot come in contact with uh, that. I could have moved it over here on this side, but that would require more wiring, longer wires. I'd have to make some more of these, and I'm trying to keep these as short as possible. So um, this is doing just great. Not only that, but it's perfect because this fan is right there. The main board is going to be the first thing to really kind of warm up. So this fan is likely going to be spinning at 20-30% on and off uh, while the inverter is running. So that will keep this buck converter nice and cool because you can see it's got this puny little fan on here and a heat sink because it's obviously bucking the voltage. So that generates heat and that's why it needs a heat sink. That fan will be more than enough to keep this buck converter cool. So, uh, this does have the Wi-Fi board installed, and you can see where I have no charge here, obviously. I modified the uh, front panel here slightly. Uh, basically, I doubled up on the wiring going to L1. Power Jack has a single small wire, and I don't have it on the bench right now, but it looks similar to this. A single small wire that runs from the charger board to your L1 and uh, I ended up uh, doubling up I actually used this style wire you might be able to see it down there I doubled up on it so it runs to the um, the uh, charger board same style wire as L2 so these are both now going to be equal 
Uh, so that's something else that I did. That's just for me. And um, I converted this plug here to 110 volts rather than having this one to 220. I don't have anything that plugs into this. So I went ahead and converted that over so that both of these plugs, I can just plug whatever I want into them and it'll be okay. Now, obviously with the install of the Wi-Fi board, fan switch doesn't work. Uh, the Wi-Fi board still counts on the power switch. This is your master override switch. So basically, um, you know, when this is in the off position, the, the Wi-Fi board will be off. Um, and so that's your master override switch unless, you know, in case you've got some kind of a problem, then you can just shut it off right here. Uh, I do have a total of five extra thermistors or seven thermistors in total. Uh, I placed three thermistors on top of this transformer. You can see where I've got them placed on top here. I also have one thermistor down there on the side of the transformer. Now to most of you, or if not all of you, that would be overkill. But I do like to monitor the temperature of the transformer. Because there are actually such things as hot spots where a part of the transformer might be getting really warm. But then the other side or wherever might be getting cool. And you might be in a situation especially on a stock power jack converter with all that plastic wrap and everything that they put over them, where only this part of the transformer or the back side of the transformer is actually being cooled, whereas this side really isn't being cooled all that well. So being able to monitor as far away from the fans as possible, which actually technically would be down here, but there's not a whole lot of room for that. So I just put a thermistor down there. So that if that area of the transformer starts to heat up, then this fan here, as well as this lid fan here, will come on to help keep the transformer cool. This is what I would consider to be kind of overkill. However, somebody who is constantly drawing their inverter up high will absolutely love having this type of setup. Um, you know, because really, PowerJack's big weakness is the fact that they put... The And it's not really their fault. They have to do this for shipping purposes. But they put the bracket over the top. They put the lid uh, up top of that with a rubber mat on top of that. Or below that, actually. Beneath that. So you trap all of this heat inside right here. Plus, a lot of them are wrapped in plastic. As well as tape around the outsides. And it's just... It turns into, you know, this big microwave, basically, in the inside. All that heat stays in there. And no matter how much fan speed you've got... It's there's so much heat in there that's not allowed to escape, especially in the center area, that it causes problems. So I, of course, recommend that you remove this as long as your inverter isn't moving around. It doesn't matter how big your inverter is or how small it is. Get rid of all that. Um, and that will open up the uh, transformer to allow it to cool even better.